Hello YouTube, this is Ready and Sealer coming right back at you. This is another episode of the Ready and Sealer show, uh, the Ready and Sealer Vogue show to be precise. So we left off here in Goldshire where we were about to do a bunch of quests. Now as the first thing for today we're going to see our hunter trainer. As this is a leveling guide I will be explaining what exactly is a trainer. You see in the World of Warcraft you'll be required to gain new abilities for whatever class you choose to pay. So, you'll need these guys. Where the hell is he? He's there. This is what we call a hunter trainer. He trains the hunters in all of our abilities. So I have two abilities available, Track Beast and Raptor Strike, and we'll just go right ahead and train both of them, but we couldn't since I don't have enough money. So how do we get money? Selling all of this crap. So let's do that. And I think I should equip the new items. Why didn't I do that yesterday? Ah, uh, well, so selling up, and I apologize if I seem kind of tired today, I didn't get much sleep last night due to my computer being busy uploading the former videos of the show. Oh, it requires me to be level 6, which I'm only halfway to, of course, of course. So let's go over here and pick up the next quest. As I said, another warning, on a role-playing server, do not enter the Goldshire Inn unless you want to have casual sex with random role-players. It's disgusting, really. So, we're moving on. These quests require us to go deep into the foggy deep mines. And here we must grind for gold dust and weird candles and kill a bunch of kobolds. Now, in my first video I explained what a kobold is, today you get to see what they actually look like. And they are, fr quite frankly, disgusting. So let's check the quests. Now we've got all of our objectives over here. And moving and moving. I'm singing in the rain. Alright, there's one of them. Let's kill the bastard and start the quest. Alright, we have another hunter over there. Although he seems to be a. Yeah, he's level 8. He's a higher level than me. And our wolf has gained a level. The cool thing about World of Warcraft is that for the Hunters and Warlocks, your pet levels up. Now, the Warlock pet levels up along with you, which means it's, its power just grows as you do. But the Hunter pet actually levels by itself and learn its own abilities depending on what type of pet you have. This is a kind of interesting fact since I know of only a very, very few games where they actually take the time to... Um, to do that, to make a talent tree or a special ability tree or whatever you want to call it uh, for the pets. Now, whilst we're grinding these kobolds, I shall tell you of some exciting news that my Facebook told me today. It told me that Blizzard has indeed launched a new game, a new console game, which is the first for many, many years that Blizzard has designed a console game. It's called StarCraft something, and it's basically StarCraft 2, but played with the Xbox Kinect. Now, for those of you who don't know what the Xbox Kinect is, it's basically a wave motion detector for the Xbox, which allows you to record movement and the like while you're playing. So you'll basically be playing using your entire body, like with the V. Which, I think that's pretty awesome. Oh my gosh, so many people are in here today. Be impossible to move on with this quest. Well, we got one objective completed, discovered the Fargo Deep Mine. Now, as we're saying, these are kobolds, and they're ugly red thingies who says, you know, take candle. That's basically what a kobold does. Blizzards should really replace the kobolds. They suck. Why did my wolf suddenly turn around and start attacking something that wasn't my pet? Well, it got me some loot. Oh, fair enough. Alright, so let's pull this mob. Alright, now that we're getting into the higher levels, target not in line of sight, I can start explaining some of the hunter mechanics. Now then, a hunter is, as I've said, a ranged attacker, but that's not all of it. Using its pet, it gains what's called focus. This is the energy that a hunter uses to cast his abilities. And I'm afraid that I'm about to die. This is what happens when you pull too many mobs. You end up dying. So, six minutes until release, we'll just release by ourselves. Then a fine little loading screen pops up, and I'll have to run all the way back to the mines. Hooray, Blizzard. This is, seriously, this is one of the most annoying parts of the entire game. Anyways, back to the Honda mechanics. They use this little bar up here called the focus bar. 
Focus energy is recovered by having your pet attack, by your pet being attacked, like with the Warrior's Rage ability. And when you use Steady Shot, which I have binded right here to my one key. So yeah, that's basically about it. That's the Hunter mechanic. You use these focus points to channel your energy into overpowered arrow attacks, like this one. The Arcane Shot, which is the one you start off with as a Hunter. Uh, with every hunter ability comes a yard in range that you can, must be at a distance of that, like I have between 5 and 40 and that's the distance I need to have in order to cast this ability. Now then, I could spawn on top of the mine, so let's just call in our pet and start ganking some more kobolds. Where's the you know take candle? Where did it go? Die, kobold. Running and running and running, running is nice. So, yeah, about the Xbox Connect Star Trek thing, I think it's an interesting experiment. It's pretty awesome, but they seriously need to develop it really good. They, they, they shouldn't release it until they're 100% certain that it's actually going to work. Because even though I, only ju I watched the trailer and a few gameplay shit from it, it looks pretty shizzle, but I can imagine so many faults if it starts lacking and such, then you'll just end up auto-attacking your own units. Uh, if no one knows what StarCraft 2 is, then go check out the channel known as Total Halibut, or Total Biscuit, or the Cynical Brit. He is a uh, decent StarCraft 2 reviewer, and you'll be able to get some info on that game from him. So, yeah. Well, I can strongly recommend that you get your hands on the StarCraft 2 not so sure about the Kinect thing. I'm going to try it out and probably make a video for you with it when it comes out. There's no release date for that game yet, so perhaps we can be lucky and it'll be using some 2012 engine. But one thing about this Kinect thing that really bugs me is how it's just a lame excuse to postpone Hearth of the Swarm. You know, the new StarCraft 2 expansion where you get to play as the Zerg and a lot of new multiplayer units comes into the game. Like, for example, we could hope for the Lurker in multiplayer uh, games. It's just an excuse to postpone it because it's not ready. So, if they, if they actually release the Kinect version of StarCraft 2 before they release the Heart of the Swarm, they're seriously going to make some angry troll nerdy thing. I mean, I, mean, I don't do the trolling. I'm happy as long as I get my game time when I want to play. But it does seem sort of like just an excuse. Die, evil monsters. So, yeah. We're just grinding levels here. There's nothing big. As I said in my former videos, I'll probably, when I've shown you a bit more hunter mechanics, there'll be some more in the next video. Then I'll probably skid up to level like 13, because then I can start to get into some of the really interesting uh, really interesting things a hunter can be doing when it is leveling, like player versus player combat, uh, dungeoning, the looking for group systems, the talent points, oh yeah, I should make a video about level 10, because that's when we get these down here, if you can see those talents requires you to be level 10, that's when we get to choose which specializ specialization we will pick as a hunter. Uh, every class gets their talent points at level 10, but I think the hunters are some of the coolest talent points ever along with the mage. It got into close range combat. This is a hunter's real weakness. We, we can't really deal with it in melee combat. This is where I think Blizzard should have adapted more to the Dungeons and Dragons style hunters, the rangers. Uh, they have animal companions, ranged attack, but they get to pick between ranged and melee combat. I mean, a hunter in melee could be really cool to see. We have a survival spec, which a specialization, which is based on traps and a, b a bit of parrying and such, but it would be really awesome to like have a fury hunter running around with two one-handed weapons and slicing things up while firing uh, gun support at them first. Might be a bit OP though, I think that's why they didn't do it, but still it, it would be awesomely cool. Just one gold dust left and we'll be done in these godforsaken mines. Steady shot, fire! Fire! Die! God damn it! Right, no, no, nothing there. Attack it. 
as you can see, I have the target of target thing turned on, so I can actually see which mob I'm attacking, what that's attacking, and it's attacking my wolf, which is about to die, so I shouldn't go into combat right away now. I'll let my wolf get a few HP. Oh, nice, we're done. Alright, let's use this. It's a hard stone, and it allows me to telepack back to the inn in Goldshire. Now, I might do myself to lag through doing this, but we'll give it a try. Teleport, loading screen. The dwarf warrior here looks awesome. That's King Magni Bronzebeard, I believe. But, or, or it could be that wild hammer dude. Well, we're back at Goldshire. Back at the end of Doom. And just look at the lag. No NPCs are spawning. Goldshire hates computers. Seriously does. And now we have power role players to the bottom left. Now, let's see. Reward. Take the one that's worth the most cover. And another quest. Speech to Mabel. Ah, Mabel McClure. New ability available. Oh, we leveled up. Cool. So now I'm level 6, which is the level to pick a profession. And I will quickly go over professions now, and then I think we'll call it for today. A profession is like the job of your character. You can be uh, in Vow, you have so many options. An archaeologist, blacksmithing, skinning, leather worker... And most of these are complemented complemented by another ability. So I'm going to pick to be a skinner and leather worker because that's just the best thing for hunters, I think. And it's a good way to earn money. So I know for a fact that the skinning trainer is right over here. Now then, what a skinner and leather worker can do is quite obvious. When I slay a beast that has skin, I can skin it using a skinning knife. And I can even say I'll sell that skin to get some gold. It's like you can get light leather scraps, ruined leather scraps, burned leather scraps, and all that sort of thing. However, with leather working, I can use my skinning to make items. Now we have skinning and leather working. And these items are often more, were once at least, better than those that you got from questing since they were like made for you and you had to spend your time getting your hands on the stuff you needed for them. So now I'm a level worker and as you can see I open my professions tab by tapping P and going down here for professions and then clicking the level working icon. I'll drag this into my toolbar so I can always just directly open it. That's a lot faster. So we have a number of um, options here of what we want to make. We have light, light armor kits under the item enhancement category and we have some cloth, we can make a cloak, what does it look like? That's not too bad. And we can make some leather braces, leather boots and a leather vest. Which looks sort of gay, but it's a vest, so. And we can of course make light leather from ruined light leather scraps. Yeah, that's the obvious. So, moving on, we're going to the hunter trainer to get the raptor strike and then we are going to luck for today. Alright YouTube, that's all for today. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Please come and subscribe and thumbs up this video if you like it. I'm Reddy and Sila saying thank you for watching this.